Well, greetings, viewers, voyeurs, and welcome. You're with Got That Funk. The first video of 2016, unfortunately to me anyway, isn't going to be a very lighthearted one. I kind of wish it were, but it is what it is. I'm talking about the situation unfolding in Oregon, Oregon under attack. If you haven't heard about the story, let me give you a brief rundown of the facts. A group of over 100 men decided to uh, take over a building which is left empty for the winter season because it's in a remote area in Oregon. The building is run by the Bureau of Land Management, which is a federal agency. It's therefore a federally owned building, and the land it's in is also federal land. And these guys have decided to show up armed to the teeth, occupy the building, and they have stated in plain English that their intention is to defend their occupation of the building and, if necessary, kill or be killed in that defense. They're also calling for other armed citizens to come from all over the country to help them occupy the building, to defend the land, and to utilize the land to their own benefit uh, without any regard to the laws that they're breaking in the use of federal land. So, at, at the very best, that's theft. At the very worst, it's terrorism. And it's extremely disturbing to me that the media has been so openly reluctant to even, even call this terrorism. It is what it is. These guys are using the threat of violence to affect political policy changes. That is textbook terrorism. And yes, it matters that we call it terrorism. And don't get me wrong. I'm not one of these liberals who goes around saying that every mass shooting is an act of terrorism or anything like that. And I don't think that you can't call this terrorism just because at the moment no one has been killed yet. The fact is these people have said in point blank English their intention is to kill or be killed if they can't get their way and have the political changes affected that they want. That's terrorism. And it matters that we call it that. And it matters that the media so far anyway as, the, as of this recording is not calling it that. We ought to be asking in a loud steady voice, why not? We see your double standard, mainstream media. We see your double standard. You can't fool us. Bullshit is bullshit. It smells from a distance. And your reluctance to call this what it is, to refer to these men as terrorists, to refer to this action as terrorist action, your reluctance to do that exposes the lie that there's such a thing as a liberal bias in the media. There simply isn't. That's the, that's the biggest lie the right wing has ever managed to pull over people, is this idea that there's some sort of liberal bias in the media. I'm amused as well, just as an aside, that Donald Trump uh, so far has not referenced this at all, despite the fact that people are tweeting, you know, why haven't you got something to say about this? Because when the attacks happened a month or so ago in Paris, um, people were still being killed when Donald Trump was... <laughs> making offensive tweets about the situation in Paris. So um, the fact that he's maintained his, his uh, silence on this is in, in itself to me is telling. But I don't want to digress on Donald Trump. Suffice to say, the double standard in the media is stark. It's obvious. You know, um, There's also a double standard in the way the authorities are handling this. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not one of these reactionaries who are you know, pointing at Ferguson or, or Baltimore or the Tamir Rice situation and saying, oh, look at the double standard. It's because these guys are white that they're getting treated this way. Um, yes, I think there's a double standard. And yes, I think that if the uh, people doing this occupation were, say, for example, Islamic terrorists or, or Black Lives Matter uh, demonstrators or something, I do think the response would be more vigorous and swifter. Yes, I do. Having said that, I don't think these guys are getting off because they're white necessarily. I think they're, I think the response is a little bit more careful and methodic because they're heavily armed and there's a lot of them. This is not a situation where you can just send in the, na the National Guard armed to the teeth with guns blazing and mow everybody down. Any kind of situation where you've got some sort of armed holdout you really want to try to negotiate a way out of it to minimize any bloodshed, eliminate any bloodshed if you can. Even if it is Islamic terrorists, you should be trying to get out of the situation by killing as few people as possible. You should only kill people if it's absolutely necessary to save the lives of others. And at the moment, the only lives these guys are risking are their own. 
So it is not necessarily a directly comparable situation to others. And therefore, I do understand that the police are going to be a little bit more careful and methodic about it. It's also in an extremely remote area in Oregon in the heart of winter. And I seriously doubt that Oregon has the resources for a huge number of SWAT teams on call. So assess the situation in a realistic way. You know, there are other factors besides the fact that these guys are white um, that might account for the fact that there hasn't been a swifter, uh, more aggressive response to this. But yeah, I, I think anybody who tries to pretend for one second that this would not be handled differently if, say, for example, it was in a different part of the country uh, at, or if it was, um, you know, black people doing it who were protesting for whatever cause, if they were armed uh, and, and even if they hadn't used their arms like these guys hadn't, I don't think we'd be uh, describing it in the same terms, I don't think they would say black militiamen are having a peaceful armed protest. So we have to call out the double standard. Mainstream media, we see you. We know you're lying. You're not fooling anybody anymore. Politicians who are silent about this, we see you. We understand your silence. We know why you're not talking about it because there's nothing you can say. You can't possibly pretend that there's any legitimacy to what these people are doing because to do that is to invite the same type of thing to repeat itself over and over and over throughout 2016. If we are going to let the media get away with calling these guys peaceful armed protesters, you can expect more and more people to show up at demonstrations armed to the teeth. And we already know, thanks to the Occupy demonstrations from 2011 onwards, that the cops are already armed to the teeth and are more than prepared to use excessive force sometimes. And when the citizens are also armed, that's going to get mighty ugly. This could be a really ugly year. And a lot of that, I think, depends on how we get out of this situation. But one thing's for sure, I don't think we should ever lend any legitimacy to the claim that uh, this is some so somehow patriotic, that these guys are exercising their Second Amendment liberties or anything like that, you know. Having the right to bear weapons does not give you the right to steal things from the federal fucking government or commit any kind of act of terrorism whatsoever. In a democracy, you use the democratic process only to effect change. That's not just voting. You can petition your representatives. You can run for office yourself. You can demonstrate against the government peacefully, en masse, where it counts, in Washington or your state capital or any other major metropolitan area where your uh, demonstration will get traction from the media. You know, armed protest, you can't show up to a protest with loaded weapons and expect anybody to believe you that your intentions are definitely peaceful. I can't believe the media expects people to, sell, to, to swallow this lemon. So yeah, yeah, there's a double standard for sure in the way the media is reporting this. Let's not pretend there isn't. There's a double standard for sure in the way the police and authorities in general are going to handle this. Let's not pretend there isn't. But let's not also go overboard and say that they'd go in guns blazing if these were Islamic terrorists. I don't believe that for one second. I think there would be a careful and methodic response. But yes, I do think it would be a bit prompter. And I do think that it might have uh, a little bit less patience exercised as well compared to how this is going to go. But we'll see. I hope in the end that no lives are lost. And I hope that this doesn't harm our country in terms of the spirit of the nation too much. You know, um, there's going to be an awful lot of talk about uh, redneck terrorism. I'm partly responsible for that because that's what I see this as. I, I think there's an awful lot of dissatisfied people who are armed who are preparing to try to make changes through the force of arms. And that's something we can't allow. It is terrorism, and we need to call it terrorism. We can't let these guys get away with creating some kind of narrative that this is somehow patriotic and constitutional, because it's not. It's criminal. It's terrorism. You could even possibly stretch it and call it treason. But I'll leave that for the lawyers. I want to thank you guys for watching this video. And if you have anything to say about this, if you want to broaden the discussion further, I would welcome a video response. But other than that, please leave your comments in the comment section below and we'll have a nice discussion about it. And I'm on The Breakfast Club tomorrow with another video on a different topic. And I hope you'll come and join me over there for that one. I'll leave links to that in the description box below. 
And until next time, may all your ups and downs be ups.